This was Joe Biden and Xi Jinping's last leaders meeting. A White House official recently said that Mr. Biden had shown that the two countries can and must manage their differences. But Joe Biden's time to manage anything of this kind, of course, is fast running out. Lots of focus now on what Donald Trump will do in office, and he signaled an intention to take a tough line on Beijing. Meanwhile, the transition process goes, goes on, on here, here in West Palm Beach, really the HQ of that, where Donald Trump uh, has his Mar-a-Lago home, and he's announced his pick for energy secretary, an oil and gas boss called Chris Wright, who last year said there is no climate crisis. Donald Trump has, of course, signaled he wants to ramp up fossil fuel production. He's talked about drill, baby, drill, much to the alarm of climate and environmental groups, given fossil fuels' role as the main driver in climate change. Donald Trump, of course, doesn't actually take office until January. But whether it is foreign policy or domestic policy, you're already feeling that shift in power. Jessica Barker there from Florida. So as we've been hearing, those uh, two world leaders of the world's biggest economies met on the sidelines of an Asia-Pacific summit in Peru. The Chinese leader Xi Jinping has told President Biden that he's willing to work for a smooth transition in relations with the U.S. when Donald Trump takes office in January. So a lot to discuss. I'm pleased to say that we're joined by Professor Steve Tsang, director of the SOAS China Institute at the uh, School of Oriental and African Studies, the university here in in London. Professor, welcome. So we're hearing uh, that there is a willingness by Xi Jinping for a, a, a smooth transition. He's arguably extending an olive branch. But when you've got Trump talking about potentially 60 percent tariffs on, on being put on Chinese exported goods, is that going to be a two way um, extension of this olive branch? Well, I think what we have seen at Lima was for the first time under the Biden administration that Xi Jinping saw something in common with Biden, which is that both were addressing their remarks towards Donald Trump because they both want to make sure that when Donald Trump takes over the US presidency, he will not put US-China relations on a completely uh, slippery slope going all the way down. Arguably, Donald Trump is not listening because from those appointments to his administration that we've seen so far, the likes of Marco Rubio, Michael Waltz, these are hardline hawks when it comes to China. They're suspicious of China. They have American interests first. Donald Trump is not sending that kind of messaging that Xi Jinping is trying to. Oh, absolutely right. But then when Donald Trump says America first, Xi Jinping understands him to mean Donald Trump first. Xi Jinping also understands that at the ministerial level, the relationship moving forward between China and the United States would be very, very difficult, not least because Rubio is actually sanctioned by China, and China will have to lift the sanctions if Rubio is confirmed as U.S. Secretary of State. But Xi Jinping also knows that he was able to communicate effectively with Donald Trump on a person-to-person -person level, something he could not do with Biden. And in the last Trump administration, she was able to get Trump to ease up pressure when the United States got China by the throat. For example, over the SETI or when Donald Trump went on a super state visit to Beijing. On both occasions, Xi Jinping got his way with Donald Trump. That is a fascinating insight.